Hello, my name is Mary Philpot, and I'm from the Lee Library, and I'm very pleased to bring to you today Michelle Cuevas, and we're going to be talking about her books. She's an award-winning children's book, children's literature author. So I'd like to welcome you, and thank you for sharing all your books with us. And I'd like to talk a little bit about Creative Lee, and that's where Michelle's books were for the first time and her illustrations. And the first we're going to look at are your watercolors. And so we'll start with that. And this is a book of character studies. So Michelle, welcome. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I grew up in Lee, um, mm -hmm. born and raised, and went to school there. And um, so I grew up going to the Lee Library uh, all the time. So I got all my books. I think I've read most of the books <laughs> in the children's That's section. That's great. Um, so it was a real pleasure to have my artwork in the show. Um, so these are some watercolors that I did. This is for a yet-to-be-published book. These were character studies. Um, so this one here is Quimby Quail. <laughs> uh, it's an um, ink drawing with watercolor over that. And um, there's a little quote here. I like to write kind of a little personality detail about my mm -hmm. characters. His quote is, the others eyed him as if he were cuckoo. Surely his thin legs would snap like biscotti were he ever to lace them into skates. So he has a dream of being a roller skater. Oh, um, well. <laughs> he's um, very, he's yeah. quite, quite fierce looking in yes, some Yes, he's ways. very distinguished, mm -hmm. well dressed. And then we'll go to my favorite. <laughs> um, from these, this book of character studies, this is my favorite. I love this. <laughs> Thank you. I love this picture and I, and I especially love the quote. So okay. why are you... So these are three moles, um, and they work as um, vintners. They make wine, um, and it says here, making fine wine starts with the finest soil. If we know one thing, it's dirt. So this is Chardonnay, Zinfandel, and Merlot mole. And now we'll go back and start talking about your books. Sure. And a little bit more on an introduction. As I said, you are an award-winning author of children's literature, and you graduated from Williams College. And then you got an MFA, Master yes. of Fine Arts in Creative Writing from University of Virginia. So you have quite the background. So <laughs> how did all this writing start? Did it start in college? Did it start as writing in, as a child? How did this start? Yeah, good question. I did write as a child. My first story I ever wrote um, was called The Life of a Shoe. Mm -hmm. And it was about a talking sneaker, because I thought, you know, sneakers have tongues when you do a right, sneaker. So right. I thought, maybe they can talk. <laughs> um, so that was my first piece of literature. Um, I kept writing in school. I, you know, I majored in literature, so I was reading mostly and kind of dissecting, mm -hmm. doing literary studies. Um, and then, uh, a, my friend and I, we knew we wanted to go to graduate school, but we weren't positive what we wanted to specialize in. So we ended up moving to Key West, uh, mm -hmm. worked in an art gallery. And I think just being around so many artists and people who were doing what they really wanted to do and sort of um, kind of going in whatever direction their art took them, I started thinking more about writing and that it was what I had always wanted to do. So I applied to graduate school to get an MFA. Um, and I was accepted at University of Virginia, so I went. Nice. <laughs> and it was three years, I absolutely loved it. The program is really geared, a lot of MFA programs mm -hmm. are really geared toward writing for adults, short stories. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't in love with that. Um, and so I started, my mother would send me care packages and a lot of them had children's novels in them. Ones I had liked by E.B. White and things and then new ones by Kate DiCamillo and mm -hmm. people. And as I was reading them, I realized that that was more what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, that it was more fantastical, you could be more creative and imaginative, but still have a literary tilt to it. Uh, so yeah, so I, I it was, I think 2000, around 2009, I graduated and as my thesis, I had been writing my first novel, The Masterwork of a Painting Elephant. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that was, uh, that ended up getting published as my first novel. Mm -hmm. um, I think so I, when we, yeah. have, we have that book <laughs> here, yeah. so we can show this book as yeah. well. This one is, um, it's about an elephant who is a very talented painter. He holds the brush in his trunk, of course, mm -hmm. and um, and he raises this orphan. So that's really his masterwork. And this was illustrated by um, a, I think three-time Caldecott winner Ed mm -hmm. Young, who's brilliant. And yeah, so it's my first little baby book. <laughs> um, and I've you know kept writing, of course, since then. I've done um, four novels and three picture books, and I'm working on a new one. So yeah, I can show some of those if you okay, want. Okay, we're going to talk about some of those. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's start with talking about some of the books that are award winners. So okay. let's start with the Massachusetts book, the Massachusetts Book Award winner, The Care and Feeding of a 
pet black hole, which is here. Yeah, this, is, this one here, yeah. One. So okay. it's that guy, this, the care and feeding of pet black hole. Uh, so this book um, was published in 2017. And this one um, was more of a personal book. Uh, it, my stepfather passed away, uh, Edward Rossi, from Lee also, um, in 2014. And it was very hard and I was going through the process of grieving that and I decided to write a book about it. Uh, so this one, the black hole, of course is her pet. It follows her home from NASA mm -hmm. and she feeds it her problems and it grows. And then she has to go inside on a space voyage. But it's also a representative of her grief, uh, mm -hmm. the black hole kind of represents this this hole in her life, this mm -hmm. um, darkness that sort of she has to, you know, figure out and make friends with and really come to terms with. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so this was, um, and this, as you said, it won the Massachusetts Book mm -hmm. Award, which was a great honor. And we have to go to the State House. This was pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so that was really wonderful. That's great. And here's, um, an illustration from this book, which I really love. So you can hold that up. Oh yes, I did do the illustrations for yes. this book. Um, <laughs> right. So these are some, these are some constellations that I made up. We've got Stickum figurus, uh, a jar of fireflies, ice cream conius, high five major, um, Brontosaurus borealis. This was just a scene where she and her father uh, in the past were making up constellations. Mm -hmm. So That's I did wonderful. do the illustrations. I did about 50 or 60 illustrations for this book. Mm -hmm. And here it is shown in the book. So oh, we yes. don't so, have yeah, to search a... for the page. <laughs> this is kind of what it looks mm -hmm. like in the interior of the book there. Mm -hmm. That's great. So now we can go on to your next award winner, <laughs> which is um, the, un the um, uncorker of, of ocean um, yeah, ocean. <laughs> the uncorker of ocean, ocean bottles. bottles. Yes. It is a tongue twister. Um, it is. <laughs> this one's illustrated by Erin Stead, and uh, it's a picture book, clearly. Uh, and so I did the words, and she did the illustrations. And this one, um, this one is about a man named the uncorker of ocean bottles, and it is his job to find bottles that people have thrown into the ocean with notes inside mm -hmm. and deliver them. He delivers them to the recipient, um, but he really wishes that someone would write him one one day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a, it's a quiet story. It's sort of a contemplative story. It's got a lot of um, feelings of loneliness and then finding community, mm -hmm. sort of where the story comes it's from. It's a great book. It would be a perfect book for college students when they enter the college, yeah. or even high school students, but I think for college students it's got a great lesson. This is a wonderful book because Thank you. It, you can read it on lots of levels, and so it's really wonderful, and yeah. the illustrations are beautiful. As She's very mm -hmm. talented, yeah. So this is a very lovely book. Thank you for sharing that. Thank and you. here it is in Italian. Oh yes, so, so a lot of my books, um, or mo many books, get published in other languages. For novels, they do different covers often mm -hmm. because they have their own publishing um, world in the different countries. Uh, for picture books, of course, they're usually keeping the same cover. So, Il Positano de Massage in Bottiglia, mm -hmm. I believe. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And here are your other picture books, so yeah. we can at least show the covers sure. of those. Um, so, in, in order, my next one was this okay. one. Uh, Smoot, A Rebellious Shadow. Uh, this was the story of a shadow who was attached to the most boring boy in the world. <laughs> and, uh, and he ends up breaking free from the boy and going on adventures of his own. Um, so that's Smooth the Rebellious Shadow, illustrated by a wonderful Canadian illustrator, Sidney Smith. Mm -hmm. I think he's very talented. Definitely check out his other books too. They're really great. Mm -hmm. So that was that one. <laughs> and, um, and then last, this was the most recent, um, The Town of Turtle. And this is illustrated by Katya Chen. And this is about a turtle who decides to do some renovations to his shell, just painting, mm -hmm. you know, interior walls. He has leftover paint. <laughs> so he decides to do uh, like some additions. He builds an additional deck, and then he thinks he wants, you know, a garden for the deck, then he wants a view. So he ends up building the entire town on his shell, but he's still very lonely, and so he, um, while he's sleeping, a lot of people move into <laughs> his shell. So it's the town of Turtle. It has a really interesting gatefold in this one, too. Let's see if I can find it. Somewhere. This is a really neat. Neat. so. This is the town. Mm -hmm. So kids love to do it. You know, we can open this, and this shows the little turtle down here, the whole town up here. That's a great piece. <laughs> yeah, that's a I love that piece. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Okay, so we go from those books, then we'll go to, um, we'll go Confessions of an Imaginary Friend. Yeah, so uh, this is Confessions of an Imaginary Friend. So in this book, it's a boy and his sister. They're best friends, they do everything together. And he feels like he's ignored a lot. He doesn't get called on in class, even when he raises his hand. Uh, you know, the bus sometimes will just leave without mm -hmm. him. And he finally uh, realizes that he is actually her imaginary friend instead mm. of her brother. <laughs> so cue existential crisis uh, and he, kind of an adventure where he tries to figure out who he is and what it means to be real and to be seen. So it's really his, his story of that adventure. That's good. <laughs> and so this one and the other, and the yeah. feeding of the black hole are being made into... Yeah, animated one. films. Mm -hmm. um, Animated films take a very long time <laughs> to mm -hmm. be made, so anytime in the next few years it could happen. Um, but I got to do some creative consulting mm -hmm. uh, on these, and it was very it's a very so interesting how did, process. How did that go? It was great. It was um, basically I I went in and we would just talk through the storyboard, kind of go through what the scenes could be by what the chapters are. Mm -hmm. When I write, I tend to use the the model of a film the way that it. Um, kind of the first act, second act, climax. Right. So that's always helpful. It was actually helpful. We sort of already had a bit of a structure there. Mm -hmm. But it was very interesting. They um, they showed me how they use clay models before it goes into the computer system. And so it's really nice to see sculptures of characters. And then they actually have actors sometimes do movements in front of the camera to mm -hmm. capture that. Um, and they showed you know the sound team and mm -hmm. things. So it was really interesting for me. Writing books, you're just home alone, right. <laughs> writing by yourself, maybe with your dog. Um, so this, it was very exciting to go be with, you know, a team and they're making films. And so that's always exciting to so see. So is one of them out yet? Nope, neither, neither. have been finished okay. yet. I think, uh, I think the order would probably be Confessions of an Imaginary Friend and then Black mm -hmm. Hole, but we'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Pro early one production the, schedules. <laughs> one of the things you shared, and you might want to talk about it, and this is your writing notebook. From oh, this was yeah. from the first draft of the Karen feeding. Yeah, the that's true. Hole. Yeah, this was um, in your exhibition at the library, mm -hmm. and I thought it'd be interesting just for especially young people to see that as authors, everything's very messy when you're starting. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, so this was a good page I chose because. I do all my books pretty much handwriting for the first scenes, mm -hmm. um, for the first draft. And then, as you can see, there's arrows and cross outs and, you know, things are written in the edges. Um, there's like little notes. And I think that it's just helpful to see that that's what it really looks like when I'm writing. Uh, it doesn't come out the way it looks in the book at mm -hmm. all. So when young people are writing, they shouldn't, or anyone really. You know, know there's a lot yeah, of just really that first creative mm -hmm. impulse should kind of look messy, I think. It should really sort of just be, um, kind of impulsive and just what comes through you and just kind of showed that a little bit. And I write all of my books, especially picture books, but all of them really like to write out in a notebook. Mm -hmm. I like to be outside a lot and be sort of um, just freehand. Same with illustrations, you, you know, you can see here I did um, so many drafts of this illustration for uh, this cloud mm -hmm. <laughs> from Which Confessions. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can see, you know, I usually, this is probably one of maybe three pages in the illustrating um, notebook that I was using. And so, you, you know, you do all kinds of different styles and then eventually you say, okay. And I, actually, I, you can kind of show I, yes, which one I actually ended up, <laughs> yep, <laughs> we ended up choosing. So that. it looks like we ended up choosing this one. Um, trying to figure, mm -hmm. I think it's yeah, this guy yeah. here. <laughs> so you can see, I'm, I don't know if I chose that or the design editor mm -hmm. did, but um, I'll usually give them a few choices. And I wasn't trained in art, but I did art also through mm -hmm. school. So it was, it was a fun challenge, I'll say, to do the illustrations for books because I never realized how long it took. It's even for doing line drawings that I do, it's, it takes quite a while to do so many drafts of it to get it where you want it, even if you're trying to make it look like a child. Right. <laughs> you know, because right. this book was uh, first person of an eight-year-old, so it was trying to make it look like they were his drawings. But even that can take a while to make it look kind of messy and mm -hmm. un unkept, so. <laughs> That's great. So are you illustrating pretty much now all of the books that you're writing, or are you still some? Yeah, some? I haven't decided completely. Um, I'll probably still keep pairing with artists for the picture books just because mm -hmm. it's it's just a wonderful feeling to have artists that you respect so much. 
you know, when you first see that artwork, it's really magical. Um, for the novels, my next novel is a bit longer, and I think I might have someone else do the illustrations. Oh, okay. um, but it just depends on the book, really, if I'm feeling like it matches the tone of the book. Um, the next one's a bit more of a fantasy kind of adventure, so I think I might find someone who works in that world. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I'm always open to it. I think it's, this one was interesting. This was, um, um, I think this was, I don't, I'm not sure. Is, Japanese. It looks Japanese. Uh, mm -hmm. So they actually use my illustrations on the cover. Oh, and this I, is the, I know this one. This is Italian. Mm -hmm. This won some awards in Italy. It, um, it won their Primo Anderson Award, which I got to go to Italy a few times for, which was lovely. That's very nice. Yeah, I lived great. in Italy for about a year mm -hmm. when I was younger, uh, so it was great to be back That's there. wonderful. <laughs> this is German. Mm -hmm. um, his name was Casimir Carton in mm -hmm. <laughs> Germany. They change the names of the characters often. Mm -hmm. um, this one? What do you think this one is? <laughs> oh, this one I think also. It looks like yeah. Eastern European. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one's very sweet. I'm very bad at recognizing mm -hmm. <laughs> And then this one is very interesting too. Yeah. This one's got more of a playful cover. That's very, yeah, yeah. that's neat. Now, how do you get your ideas? Where do they, do you <laughs> keep a notebook of ideas? And I think uh, two ways. Okay. I have a theory that ideas just kind of are floating around. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and um, I won't call it a muse, but kind of. I think they just sort of are around and when you're looking for a new idea or starting a new project, sometimes I get, always get this feeling that it lands on your shoulder and it's sort of like, hey, this could be an idea. Because that's mm -hmm. how it feels. It kind of just feels like you're be sitting there one day and it will sort of pop into your mind. But I do think the other side is reading. I often get a lot of ideas from reading. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, this one, the Uncorker of Ocean Bottles, um, this was based on just something I had read. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> we had talked about this earlier. Queen Elizabeth I, mm -hmm. she, uh, she had her Royal Navy out at sea, and they were trying to get messages back, but there was no radio or telephones, obviously, back then. And so they would send her messages in bottles. They would put a note inside with intelligence and send it out to the, you know, the waves, kind of knowing the flow of the waves. Mm -hmm. And it, they would get back to shore, many of them, but people were finding them and mm -hmm. just opening them and reading this intelligence. So she made a position called the Uncorker of Ocean Bottles. Oh, okay. And it was this individual's job to, people had to bring this person any bottles they found, not open them, and he would open them mm -hmm. and read them. And I remember reading it, it was one of those things you read and you think, well, that's a really fun idea. Mm -hmm. And I knew it probably wouldn't be as much about the Navy and things, but I, I, the idea kind of stuck around. And I think it was in my mind for a year or two before I, I remember I sat down and I thought, okay, I think I have this person's mm -hmm. story. I think it's kind of fully there. So that happens a lot. So when you're writing, do you write about, do you have more than one project going at a time or are you pretty much dedicated to that one project or how do you work? Yeah, um, it really depends. So when I did The Caring Feeding of a Pet Black Hole, it came out the exact same day as Smoot or Rally of Shadows. So I had worked on those kind of over the same time period. But normally I would say I just do one project at a time. Mm -hmm. um, the way I work is I usually, you know, like we showed the notebooks, mm -hmm. I will just write down ideas and sort of snippets of things. Mm -hmm. And once I have enough of that, I will do a chapter outline. You should have a cork board, I'll put little post-its for every chapter. And then I'll give it a go, I'll write a few chapters. And I definitely have probably five or six books where I've started and it just, I just felt like it wasn't quite gelling. So mm -hmm. I would put those, so I have a you know drawer of those kind of projects. Um, but then sometimes it just feels right, it's flowing, and I say, okay, and I, so I continue. And I'll usually do um, probably 15 chapters just to kind of be sure, say the book is 60 chapters, maybe I'll do 15, and then I'll do an outline and show, show those to my agent and editor mm -hmm. and um, kind of get a feel for it. But usually by that point, I'm confident that it's the right project I want to work on. Mm -hmm. Picture books are different. Picture books are like writing poetry, I'd say. I would say. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. um, those are really almost always, you know, sitting outside, kind of, uh, I'll even read some poetry, um, and those are really very specific. You're choosing every word and every line, and in some ways are maybe even more difficult. I think that they're, you know, you have to be really precise with everything in those, so um, I wouldn't, they don't take as long, but I think that they're, for me, and same as writing poetry, <laughs> it mm -hmm. can be a bit more challenging just to get everything perfect. Where you can, I feel more comfortable handing in a very rough draft of a novel. Mm -hmm. 
How did you get started with a publisher? <laughs> um, I was lucky. I, I had that youthful gumption where you don't really know how hard something is. So I was finishing graduate school. I was 26, I think. And I just emailed a few agents. I uh, kind of just cold emailed with some chapters of that first novel. Mm -hmm. And one of them had just moved from um, publishing over to agenting and she was building a list, but she was also a really great editorial agent, mm -hmm. which I really needed obviously at that point. I was very young. So um, it was just I think just luck, <laughs> really, in that case that I found a person who was looking for someone like me. Um, and then, yeah, my first novel was published by Farrah Shosh and Giro, um, mm -hmm. which is under the Macmillan umbrella. And it was great. At the time, they were in the Flatiron Building. So oh, my wow. first literary meeting, I took the train in. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, That's I got to go. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, it was wonderful. Um, Frances Foster was my first editor, and she was wonderful. And it was a really exciting. It was very exciting. Um, I've sent moved to Penguin Random House, which is also bigger. Um, so I, I actually like that. I think it's nice to have kind of a, you know, they've got a, a very nice, large publicity mm -hmm. and marketing yeah. and art department. Um, so I've really enjoyed being there completely. And that's been my home for a while. <laughs> that's very nice. Yeah. So when you are writing, when you start or when you get an idea, is this idea for you? for a book for yourself or mm. are you thinking of an audience when you're writing? I think it depends on the book but probably I guess everything starts for yourself mm -hmm. I think. Um, usually it's some you know I for me it has to be something that I feel deeply about um, whatever the kind of whatever the thing behind the story is. So you were saying earlier you felt like on Corker could be read on different levels mm -hmm. and I do always I would say that's a lot of times where I start, I will start with the fun idea, mm -hmm. you know, the pet black hole. Right. And then I'll say, okay, but you can't just have a pet black hole. So I usually think of it um, as layers. I think, you know, you've got your surface where mm -hmm. that's the story that, and that's usually the story that young people are reading. If you're, right. you know, eight to 11, that age gr group, they're reading the surface story a lot. And then, and then as they get older, especially if they reread a story or they read it with like an adult Absolutely. or a teacher, mm -hmm they can sort of be their guide to say, okay, well, what else could this represent? Or think about the emotions. I know picture books um, use color a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, the Encorker Ocean Bottles has a lot of lonely scenes in blue and gray, and then a lot of really warm yellows and sunset colors mm -hmm. for when he makes that community of friends. So there's lots of ways, but I think in both types of books, um, yeah, you have a lot of different layers. And those were always my favorite books too. Um, my favorite growing up was Charlotte's Web. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember, you know, reading it as a young person and it was sad and it was, you know, really heartfelt and wonderful, but then reading it as a teen and adult and it was just a totally different book right. and it was, it just opened up. And um, I think that's, those are my favorite kinds of books. I think adults <laughs> are reading that much more young adult books yeah. these days because Absolutely. there's some wonderful stories yeah. as well and some wonderful books. Yeah. So that is, yeah. Do you get feedback from any of your readers? I do, yeah. I I always say that I write for everyone mm -hmm. and obviously shops and libraries have mm -hmm. to shelve it. You have to choose right. a room to shelve it, but I really don't picture a child audience when I write. I really um, am just writing for any age sort of and I think adults can read and remember what it was like at that time. I do hear from people. I <laughs> I have a um, an email link separate from my oh, main email right. on my website. So people do, um, young people of course will write in, often requesting help for <laughs> school for projects. Yeah. For, for project, um, yes, but often, right. you know, just to say hi. And then um, I've done a lot of Zooms during COVID mm -hmm. with classes. I used to go visit in person, but I've done more Zooms. And, um, and I get an equal number of notes from adults, um, mm -hmm. especially when they read it with uh, a young child and they <laughs> they like to tell me how they ended up you know crying right. <laughs> with their child and I always feel a s slightly bad at first but then I realize it was a cathartic <laughs> experience mm -hmm. um, so that's great but yes mm -hmm. they, they often share that so it's yeah I really like hearing from people do you have a time that you were that was most special involving your career as a writer I got to go on an international book tour uh, I guess this must have been about 2018 mm -hmm. and I went to um, all around Italy and then I went to Romania and I went to Bucharest and it was really really eye-opening to realize uh, how, how far and wide you can really be communicating mm -hmm. with other people. I, I guess I, I had always loved the idea that as an author you're writing and then someone reads it and it's like a conversation right. from a far distance but I guess I had never really wrapped my mind around that in these other languages that I can't 
read, right. <laughs> um, that people, we were still having that conversation. Right. So we couldn't even really speak to each other, but we had already had this pretty deep conversation. Um, that was a really special experience, yeah. I would think that yeah. was very special. Very, so did you keep notes? <laughs> did you keep a diary? Yeah, I have a lot, of, uh, it was a whirlwind, I'll say. Mm -hmm. They really keep you busy. Um, but yeah, they, most of the places I visited, schools, and if we did, you know, auditorium shows, mm -hmm. we a lot of them would give me notes and letters and pictures. So I have a box at home. Oh, with all that's of very that. nice. And yeah, it was, oh, that's it was great. Fun. Really special. Well, maybe that will turn into a book too. So <laughs> right, that will yeah. be great. Yeah. So, are there things that you would like to say about writing to encourage young? young people to go into writing? Yeah, I absolutely, I mean, I will say that whenever, almost every time I go to a school um, or where I'm around a group of kids, I say, anyone here want to be a writer? Almost every hand goes up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also with Illustrator, they, I think kids are super interested in that as a, as a hobby or as a field mm -hmm. of work. Um, so I super encourage it. I think, you know, I went to public school. I grew up in a very small town. My parents, you know, weren't working in literature. So I didn't really have a lot of experience with that as a kid. So I do try to almost all the time, if someone asks me to visit with a school, I try to do it just because I think the exposure mm -hmm. to someone, for, you know, especially around here, before COVID, I'd go most years to do the um, the visiting writer. Right. Or I think it was the community visiting, read a book at, mm -hmm. at my old school. And I think it was just great for them to see, I went to school here. If you really want to do something like writing, you can. It's I think not, that's great. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. <laughs> um, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's not the hardest either. And I think it's good for them to see that. Um, I'd say my advice I always give, because usually teachers, especially, will ask me to give the young, mm -hmm. young people advice, um, is to really just find your own voice. I think that the biggest part of writing for me has been kind of. Uh, see kind of seeing my own voice develop and that actually connects you more with your reader uh, when it's m more yourself I think mm -hmm. that's always really um, fascinating because I feel like when I started out I was sort of um, imitating my favorite writers right mm. you know you want to be E.B. White <laughs> right. and then as you go along it just starts to become your own voice because you mm -hmm. feel more comfortable and you kind of have just been doing it for longer so I'd say to young people just you know, whatever your experiences are, whatever the life you live, whatever, however the <laughs> the voice in your head speaks, write that, kind of mm -hmm. write from that place and write in that voice. Uh, and I think it'll be, that's gonna be better than anything else that you could try to do. I think that's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. So are are there um, other things you'd like to tell us? How you, how you relax from writing <laughs> or how you take a break from writing? Yeah. Um, your favorite um, activities uh, sure. when you're not writing? Um, so yeah, so I, like I said, I grew up in the Berkshires in Lee. I left for um, 10 plus years, I you know, for school and was traveling and lived abroad. And then um, I ended up coming back and settling down in Great Barrington with my mm -hmm. husband, he's a physician. And we love it there, we live kind of near the woods and mm -hmm. it's really peaceful. My office is upstairs and overlooks like a lovely forest area. So it's perfect for writing. And um, and I would say my favorite thing is just hanging out with my dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a, you had a picture yeah. in your exhibit mm -hmm. in Lee. Um, I have a 100 pound Baronese Mountain Dog mm -hmm. named Indy after Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. We're thinking of getting a second one. It's oh, big wow. to say. <laughs> But um, but yeah, and so otherwise, I like uh, I like painting and drawing, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I like just you know hiking around or being out in nature. We love to travel, obviously, mm -hmm. not as much lately, but we've been right. daydreaming at least. Mm -hmm. um, and for a bit, I was researching um, a book I did about birds, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I got really into falconry. I started mm -hmm. doing some falconry and um, just going to the Audubon Society and doing bird banding and things. I'd like to get m more into that. I don't know if I'm quite ready to have a falcon, but I, yeah. I've looked into it. I think it would be very interesting. <laughs> this has been wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing all this, for talking about your books for and your illustrations and sharing your work in Creatively. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for having me. <laughs>